We welcome you back to Dallas. Uh, on Monday, we lost Bill Walton at the age of 71 to cancer. I want to take a few minutes to talk about Bill's legacy, Bill the man, uh, Bill the player. Um, he was one of a kind. We start with coaches, Jason Kidd, Rick Carlisle. It's uh, a legend lost uh, when you talk about, you know, basketball and what he, he brought uh, to the media side, um, uh, you know, as a ex player uh, to be able to be successful, not just on the court, but um, also um, on TV. And so, you know, just understanding uh, his loss will, will be missed. I have him to thank for me being married to my wife, Donna. Our first date was to a dead show in Washington, D.C. And I called Bill and I I said, look, I got a date with a girl that I think is pretty cool. I'd love to go to the dead show at Capitol Center. I don't have any tickets. Can you help? <laughs> and he said, uh, just go to the back door. Tell him you're Rick Carlisle from the Boston Celtics and everything will be just fine. So we were set up for the show and we were on, we were actually on stage watching the show. And during the break, you know, kind of wandered into the back and just opened up a door and... Uh, Ended up sitting down with Jerry Garcia, Bob Weir, and Mickey Hart for about 15 minutes. It was an unbelievable night. I'm thankful to him. I know there's been a lot of talk about what he meant to the whole world. He defiantly competed for every moment in life to be the greatest it could possibly be. Figured it'd be nice to bring a UCLA guy on here, Reggie Miller, to talk about, uh, to talk about Bill Walt who uh, has died at the age of 71, and uh, he's an original, uh, and you could not imitate him. No, he was different for sure. It's funny because we all played for Power 5 schools, right? And the cool thing about playing at big university is when the alumni come back, right, to either ball with you. you know, I went to UCLA from 84 to 87. So right around that time, he was finishing up his career with the Boston Celtics. And that was in the middle of the Lakers versus the Celtics, Larry versus Magic. It was very contentious. So to have Bill Walton come back, my first few steps on the UCLA campus, he's around, he's working out with surfing Jack Haley, getting him better, Stuart Gray, guys like that. So to have him tutor us, talk to us about life lessons, what those series were was all about, and to have the opportunity once Larry Bird became our coach, because then he was around a lot because they were teammates, him and Rick Carlisle, as we, we just mentioned. You see a lot of those shots. A lot of those shots when he's signing autographs is at Gainbridge because he was there so much around Larry and around us just to give those life lessons. And he and I, what's interesting, we could talk about X's and O's, all that, but post-career, our relationship really bonded and went further because of our love of two wheels of cycling he was a huge cyclist a lot of races together we used to talk about equipment so yes it's a loss but for Bruin Nation he was so colorful there were so many layers to him which a lot of people didn't understand so many different layers which was very unique Hall of Famer uh, two-time NBA champion obviously legendary career at UCLA for Big Red yeah, man, it was when I got that news yesterday, it, it hurt because you talk about great at basketball, great in life, great as a broadcaster, but just a good person. I'd never seen a person who was more joyful to be around, who was always in a good mood. And I said, I explain it like this, Ernie. The world is not as good a place it was yesterday. The world was better for having Bill Walton in it, and it's not as good a place as it was. We lost a legitimate person. The world, man, we lost. I mean, obviously, our basketball hearts are heavy, but the world is not as good a place as it was yesterday because we lost Bill Walton. I feel so fortunate to have known both Bill Walton and John Wooden. Yeah. And, and, to, and you know how much respect Bill had for Coach Wooden, and, and in his later years was a constant companion of his and stopping by to see him. But to hear each of them tell me that story about 
Bill refusing to shave his beard and get his hair cut before the season started and John Wooden telling him well Bill we're gonna miss you you know it's <laughs> and then and then Bill leaving on his bike and coming back 20 minutes later freshly shaven and a haircut so that he would he'd be able to practice that day it was, it was incredible and I got the opportunity to know him uh, when Luke Walton being our coach uh, Luke it's one of the most incredible people I've ever been around. Luke was our coach. Uh, the first season I became an all-star, he was our coach to the first 50 games of that year. And Bill would be around all the time and just so much color and joy that he would bring to our arena each and every time. We're going to miss him. Uh, true legend. Uh, he's been great to all of us. And I just want to send my love to Luke and the family. Throw it down, big man. For you, big man. Yes, we definitely lost one of the forefathers of the Big Man Alliance, Kareem Wilk. Great Bill Walton, great Bill Russell. Bill and I had an up and down relationship, not gonna lie. I talked to Luke yesterday, I gave him my condolences. Like, even though me and your father had an up and down relationship, I wanna send you my condolences. It was up and down because I was sensitive. What I call, you know, the things I'm doing to all the big men now, Bill, all those guys screaming, they were doing it to me. It's called the big man rites of passage. So a lot of times he would criticize me, he would criticize me. And I was so mad one time, I wanted to put hands on him, but the beautiful Dr. Lucille says, son, when people criticize, see if there's some truth inside that criticizing. So all the things I were doing, not really focusing on basketball, I had to learn how to listen to what these legends say, because if you want to become a legend, shouldn't you listen to a legend before you? So once I started listening to what Kareem said, oh yeah, check, check, that good. Check's not that good, they're getting swept. They gotta start winning championships. When I started start listening to Bill Wall and Bill Russell, uh, Chamberlain, those guys. Then I became a you know better player and a better person. I saw Bill uh, last year at, at the Final Four. We hugged. He told me he just wanted to make me better. And that's my message to all these kids that we criticize. We're not making fun of you and playing with you. We're just telling you to make you better. Because all of us up here, including the great Bill Walton, we have that G14 classification. So, uh, Luke, uh, the rest of your family, you know, my condolences go out. I'm definitely going to miss him. He was hard on me. And I'm glad he was hard on me because, you know, me growing up the way I was, I was raised. I'm not, I'm not soft. It just made me who I am today. So thank you for uh, uh, help forming the Big Man Alliance. And we're going to miss you, Big Man. You know, one of my prized possessions is at the Final Four one year. I says, man, I'm standing by Kareem and Bill Walton. And I said, somebody got to get me this picture. <laughs> and... I had, I sent it to Kareem, I sent it to Bill. It's one of my most prized possessions. They both signed it, it's huge, and it's one of my most prized possessions to get the great Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and the great Bill Walton and me just standing between them at the Final Four. I think the, the picture is probably 12 years old, but it's one of my most prized possessions. Yeah, for me, I, I was fortunate enough after in the NBA to go on a, a probably 10 to 15 NBA trips with Bill Walton and his wife. So, Lori, yeah. Lori, and we sit at the back of the bus and you just hear all of the, 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 the millions and millions of stories. But one of my nephews today were like, you know, how good was Bill Walton? I said, well, you know, for young people, he would be today's Jokic. His ability to pass the basketball, to create, to do things off the bat, he would be the same person. And, you know, later on after the injuries, he became more of a role player but he was a dominant player, obviously went in in college three times, twice in, the, in college, three-time All-American, and, and, and so on and forth, so forth. But his ability when he first got into the NBA before his injuries, he was Jokic. So, you know, that's what we missed from our era. We're missing Jokic. And we admired him, we understood him, and we also understood the color that he had in the game when he analyzed because it was he wasn't really talking to the fan he was talking to us yes. that only we could only yes. we could understand reggie yeah. so he's really talking to us when he used to do color you and, uh, had to know him to understand his quirks and his personality because he could break down x's and o's he did them in a very unique way but only ballers really kind of knew right. the inside language he was talking about. And Ernie, I got to give a shout out to Coach Del Brown. When I was 17, 18 years old, and they were saying Shaq was going to be a great player. Bill Walton came down and worked out with me for a week. 
So I got to talk to Bill. I got to talk to Kareem. And, you know, they told me a lot of stories, you know, just like Kenny alluded to. So shout out to uh, Coach Brown for introducing me to the great Bill Walton. And I'll say this, too. He was he was a source of joy. You couldn't help. When you were around Bill Walton, yes. it was going to be a good time. And everything brought joy to him. He was also a great source of encouragement. Um, and I'll and I'll get personal with this because a couple years ago when I lost my mom, I got an email from Bill Walton. Can you feel it? Said, "Be glad for what you had you for so long. Live your life in tribute and honor to and for that magnificent angel. We love you. We thank you. Heal on, shine on, B.W." I think that same thing could be said right back to Bill Walton's family tonight. And so to Lori and Luke and Adam and Chris and Nick, heal on, shine on. That's a mic drop, Ernie. <laughs>